Greetings, humans. So I built the world's most advanced guitar plucking robot mechanism thingy. And to help contextualize what I mean by that, I put together this playlist of YouTube videos of these other guitar robots that people have built. And I'll put a link to that below so you can see these. Uh, but right now, I think it might be helpful if I go through some of these videos and talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of the plucking mechanisms that these people have used to help you understand how I think that these can be improved upon. And so the first thing that I'd like to point out is that all of these robots either strum the guitar or they pluck the guitar strings, but not both. And so this one is a really great example of a robot that strums the guitar strings. And this thing is actually brilliant. The more I look at this, the more it kind of blows my mind. I mean, there's so much genius has gone into this thing. Uh, but the one drawback is that this whole machine was basically built just to play this one particular song. And because of that, this pick can't just reach out and pluck any string. All it does is strum back and forth across the strings. And then so on the flip side of that, here's a different robot that plucks the strings but doesn't strum them. In other words, it has six individual plucking mechanisms and each mechanism is kind of attached to whatever string it's on and no one pick can go back and forth and pick any of the other strings. And maybe I'm nitpicking a little bit because if you can pluck each of the strings individually, simultaneously, or in rapid succession, then at least orally, that's probably the same as strumming all of the strings with a single pick. But the reason I'm nitpicking this is because I think there's a difference visually, because this strumming gesture is such an important visual part of guitar playing in terms of how guitarists communicate with their ensemble partners. And so from a visual perspective, I don't think one strum is equivalent to six individual plucks. And it would be nice to have a robot that can choose whether to pluck or to strum based on what it's trying to communicate visually. A second thing about these robots is that none of them, as far as I can tell, are capable of plucking the strings with different strengths or different loudnesses. So this one is a great example of that. Each plucker basically just has one degree of freedom, so it plucks the string the same way each time. In some ways, this is actually a really brilliant design. It's simple, it's fast, it's accurate, and in this case, this is an electric guitar, and plucking strength probably isn't that important here. But in my case, I'd like to be able to pluck the strings with different strengths or loudnesses. And then one final thing is that, as far as I can tell, none of the plucking mechanisms in any of these robots are also capable of damping the strings. And this one I'm definitely nitpicking, <coughs> because many of these robots do have separate mechanisms for damping the strings. And this is one that, if you go and listen to the video, the damping mechanisms actually sound really great. You can hear there's some nice staccato playing. And maybe there's some difference in terms of the gesture, like plucking and then damping might be visually a little bit different than plucking with one mechanism and damping with a separate mechanism. Maybe that difference is important, probably not. But if I'm gonna make this plucking mechanism that's capable of doing all these other things, then it might actually be more easy to incorporate the damping into the plucking mechanism rather than building a separate mechanism. So last time I talked about this, I had built this plucking mechanism, which can kind of pluck some of the strings, although the movement is really awkward and there are a lot of problems here. And some of those problems are because the geometry of this mechanism is all wrong. And some of the problems are because the software that I'm using to control this is all wrong. So in order to fix this, I had to go back to the drawing board. And several people recently have asked me about my design process and how I design and build these types of things. So I'll walk you through that a little bit. So I guess you could say that 3D design is kind of my maker kryptonite. And because of that, 
I design almost everything in 2D in Inkscape and I tend to color code everything. So the blue things are here just for measurement and when I go to print my final part I'll just delete those. So the yellow parts here are my actual part and I can union those together and then the red things here are things that need to be subtracted out so I'll just difference those out of my part. And then in order to fabricate this, I need to walk over to the engineering building. And I saw this thing on my way over there. I'm just gonna drop this here, you know, don't mind me. Interesting. Anyway, over in the engineering building, I have a secret stash of plywood. So I'll grab some of that. And then I'll go over to the secret laser cutter room. And so I've exported my parts from Inkscape as a PDF so that I can import them into this computer that the laser cutter is actually attached to. And unfortunately, this is a university computer, so I just have to use whatever software they have on it. Uh, and so I can just import that PDF and then print it. And so then here's the laser cutter cutting out my parts. And of course, I pick the only sunny day ever in Oslo and because of the glare you can't really see what's going on but anyway that's what that is and so here my parts are done this is the most satisfying thing ever lifting up the excess material and having the parts fall out of it although some of the parts here got stuck okay you know what actually this isn't that satisfying just forget about it okay anyway here are all my stupid parts <laughs> and so I can glue those together and I'm using way too much glue. It became a problem later. I had to scrape and sand some of it back off. You know, if you want to learn how to do glue ups, maybe you should be watching Frank Howarth. That guy has way more patience than I do. Anyway, now I can look out the window while I wait for the glue to dry. Anyway, once the glue's dry, I can take all of the hardware and motors out of the old prototype and put them into the new prototype. Uh, I said I was going to do more of these build montages, but this is not good content, people. This is so boring. I'm just going to skip through some of this. Uh, so this is what the finished thing looks like. And then I can go all the way back over to my other lab in the psychology building and screw this onto the last motor that I have over there. And then, yeah, that's it. Voila, here you have the world's most advanced guitar plucking thingy mechanism or whatever I called it in the title. And so some of the extra little nubs that I put on this actually kind of complicate things. So I had to work out the kinematics again. So here you can see I can control the X position of the pick and then I can control the Y position of the pick. And then this is kind of my favorite thing. The end of the pick stays stationary but I can control the angle of the pick. So I'm kind of rotating the pick around its endpoint. And then so I worked on the software that controls this arm as well. So in my last video, you saw this very like kind of awkward and jerky movement, but I've worked it out now so that it'll move kind of smoothly. And for each thing it does, it'll kind of make an anticipatory movement and then do whatever it does. And then it'll have some kind of follow through movement. And so it can, of course, now pluck each of the strings. And notice that if the robot happens to be down here next to all the strings, and I want it to move over here to pluck this other string, it can't just move directly there because it's going to collide with all of the other strings on its way. Uh, but what I've done here is I've made this smart enough that it knows that it needs to kind of lift itself up and go over all of the strings to get where it needs to go. Uh, so here you can see that. And then here you can see the same thing, but kind of in the reverse direction. 
notes and playing up and over the strings. And then so I can pluck with different strengths or different loudnesses. So here's a nice quiet pluck. Okay, so maybe that was a little too quiet. <laughs> well, at least it's repeatable. So let's try that again. So yeah, that was a nice quiet pluck. And then here is a nice loud pluck. And so the robot can also do like double plucks or like multiple rapid plucks in a row. And what's interesting about that is that as soon as I send the first command for the first pluck, the finger starts moving. And then subsequently, while it's moving, I send the second command before the robot is plucked the first time. And so that kind of implies that that second pluck is going to have to be scheduled to happen sometime in the future. And that's not that interesting. But what is interesting is like when or you know where is that pluck supposed to be scheduled? Because there's not going to be enough time for the robot to pluck the first time, then move all the way back to the resting position, and then all the way back to the string again to pluck a second time. There's not enough time for that. So somehow the second pluck needs to interrupt the first pluck, or somehow that second pluck needs to be spliced into the movement that's already been planned. Anyway, so here is what that sounds like. And then finally, this mechanism can strum any range of strings. So here it is strumming the top two strings, and then the top three strings, and so forth. Yeah, and then it can strum the strings in the reverse direction. And it can strum any range of strings in either direction. So this will be the D, G, and B strings. And then this will be the same thing in the reverse direction. And then this will just be the two middle strings. So I think you get the point. And then this mechanism can also dampen the strings. So here you'll see pluck and damp. And it sounds like the low E string is kind of still resonating there. So let's try that again. Yeah, so that sounds pretty good. So I think that fairly convincingly demonstrates that this plucking mechanism does a lot of things that no other guitar plucking robot can do. And it does most of what humans can do with their right hand, but not everything. Anything that requires your hand to be in a specific position along the string, my robot can't do. And so, for example, you can't play sul ponticello or sul tasto, which sometimes guitarists do to produce different kinds of sounds. Uh, you can't do palm muting, which really requires you to dampen the strings right here at the bottom of the string. And there are also certain types of harmonics that really require you to dampen the string in a particular location. And so my robot can't do that either. But those are kind of extended techniques. And I think that my robot can do most of the things that are involved in kind of regular, you know, the bulk of regular guitar playing. And so overall, I'm quite satisfied with the results so far. Um, as far as future work, so far I've just been looking at these sound producing gestures, but I'd also like to start looking at non sound producing gestures. For instance, maybe the robot can indicate that it's ready to play by 
you know, standing at attention or making some other kind of movement or gesture. Or maybe the robot can keep time by making some kind of conducting gesture or something like that. And then also in terms of future work, I'd eventually like to have several of these plucking mechanisms working together on one guitar. But for now, I think I'd like to put those things on hold because what I really want to do is start building a left-hand mechanism or something that frets the guitar so that I kind of have a complete robot and then I can start looking at how the hands interact with one another in this way. So anyway, I think that's all I have to say about that for now. You guys, you have to subscribe to my channel. Look at how much effort I put into these videos. Anyway, I guess I'll see you next time, so bye!